Hello and welcome to another episode of my Quest System series. In this and the next video we will implement the functionality for our journal and the sub widgets. But before we do that there is one bug that I wanted to show you. So when we hit play and go to our NPC, get our first quest, then hit G to add our second quest and with the second quest selected, complete a goal of our first quest by hitting J, you will see that somehow the first quest is not selected but the first sub goal is. And we don't want that to happen so let's hit escape and fix that quickly. Uh, the only thing we'll have to do for that is go to our blueprints folder, actors and quest actors, bp master quest. So here in our complete sub goal function we check whether the local goal index equals the selected sub index and if that's the case we select the sub goal. But before that we also have to check for another thing which is that this is actually the quest that we have selected. So let's add an end boolean here connect the end to the branch and we'll need to create a new variable here which is a reference to the quest manager variable type quest bp quest manager reference make that editable and expose on spawn let's drag that in and actually put that in our do not touch category and we'll get the current quest and we will check whether that equals self. So is our quest selected and is the local goal index the one that is selected for that quest? If that's true we will select it, not otherwise. Now we also have to pass through that quest manager reference. So let's minimize the BP master quest, go to our actors BP quest manager and in our add new quest function when we spawn the actor we will pass through a reference to ourself for the quest manager. Compile and save. Now we can hit play, get our first quest, add the second one and hit J and you will see that our first quest wasn't selected just because we completed the sub goal of that. Okay, so that was the first thing that we have to do. Let's minimize our quest manager and go to our blueprints folder because we will need a new structure here. Call that s underscore completed goal. Double click. So the thing is that currently, if you have a look at our BP master quest, we just store all the completed sub goals in one array. But we don't know whether we completed them successfully or they were just completed because we failed them. So we will have to make a difference there and therefore we need a struct. So for all of the completed goals we will save the goal index of the type integer, then the goal info which is a goal info and finally a boolean called successful question mark. Save that and we can close that. Then we also need another enum. Let's just duplicate the e quest states and call that e underscore goal states. It's basically the same thing because we can have current goals, completed, successfully completed goals and failed goals. But just so that we don't get confused we will have a separate enum for that and open it and first will be current, next one completed or better success and third one failed. Save it and close the enum. Then we'll get back to our quest manager because in here we also only keep track of the quest actors. Here so let's just re rename that to current then we will add a new variable and call that completed or successfully completed, whatever you want to call that completed quest actors type for that will be bp underscore master quest reference and it will be an array then add another one and that will be the failed quest actors compile save we close the quest manager now and let's get back to our BP master quest. 
So here we have our completed sub-goals array. Currently that's of the type goal info. But now that will be s underscore completed goal. Yeah, we want to change the variable type. And we'll add another variable called current called current state. That will not be an array, and the type for that will be e underscore quest state. Let's also put that and do not touch. Then we need another variable, which is the current description. And we only need a variable for that because we specified for our goals that they can update the description. So that may change depending on what goals you completed. That will be a text and also put in do not touch. Finally, we need one variable which is the list entry widget for that. You might have to go to your widgets folder to the quest list widget and compile and save that. And then you will need to search for quest list entry reference. Let's put that in do not touch as well. And that's it for the variables that we had to create. Uh, let's go to our setup starting goals function and here at the end when we set up all of our first goals we will also set the current description to the starting description of our quest and that we can get from our quest info. If we break that and connect the description. Also let's go back to our complete goal function because there will be an error now. Yeah, We changed the variable type of our completed sub goals and so we cannot just add that. So let's hit delete and off of the completed sub goals search for add. Connect that here and so then we will drag off of the pin here and search for make as completed goal. The sub goal index will come from our local goal index. The goal info is the local completed goal and we will check successful. Compile and save. Alright, that's it for now in the BP Master Quest. Close that and the questless entry for now. Let's go to our widgets folder and to the goal entry because we will need some variables here. First we will need the goal info. Variable type for that will be goal info. Let's make that editable and expose on spawn. Then we will need another variable called state. That will be an e underscore goal state or goal state. Also editable and exposed on spawn and the last one will be a reference to our journal widget. So the type for that will be journal, quest journal, reference, also editable and exposed on spawn. Before we can actually create an update function for the goal entry we will need to go to our journal widget, quest journal, go to the graph and we will need one variable called selected quest. And the variable type for that will be bp master quest reference. File and save. Then we can go to the goal entry and create an update function. Save. So if we head over to the designer we'll see that we first need to create our goal text. Fortunately we already did that once so we can copy that from another widget. So we did that in the sub goal widget. Go to the graph here, copy everything. And paste that. Now we don't have an assigned quest variable, so we have to remove that. Instead drag in the journal and get the selected quest. Then after our select node here, we will add another select node. The index will be the custom goal boolean from our goal info. And if it's false, we will generate that, like here. And if it's true, just plug in the goal text. Alright, then we will drag in our goal text and set text to the value of our return node here. After that, we will only need to set our goal state. So drag that in. Set brush from texture. And off of the texture, we will search for select node for the texture as well. Drag in the state as the index. And then we will have to specify our icons. So for current, search for current. 
current goal icon, for success search for completed, completed goal icon and finally for failed select the failed goal icon. After that we can return and one thing you should not forget is to call that when we construct that, so call the update function on event construct, compile and save, that's it for our goal entry. So we can close that now, close the quest journal, close the sub goal widget. And let's also do the quest list entry in this episode. So first one thing we will need to change on the design tab is to right click on our quest button and wrap that with an overlay. Then take our vertical box and drag that onto the overlay. So that way the vertical box no longer is a child of our quest button which just means that when we set the is enabled to false here only the button will change the style and not the text above that. Speaking of style let's go to the disabled and give that a tint because that doesn't look too good. I'll just type in hex linear code FF7800FF looks better. Also let's go to our vertical box, give that a padding of let's say 4 to the left and 2 to the top. No padding to the right, set that to 0. Compile save. Go to the graph. Add two variables here. The first one will be the journal, which of course is a journal reference, editable and exposed on spawn. And then we'll also need the assigned quest, also editable and exposed on spawn. That will be a master quest reference. So in the update function that we are going to create, we will need to change the color of a suggested level text. When a player has the same level as suggested, we'll set that to white. If, he's, if he has a higher level, we set that to green. And if he has a low level, we will set that to red. So let's do that. First, let's add a function called update level color. One thing I forgot is in the quest journal we will need another variable and that is character reference. Variable type will be third person character reference. Compile and save. Now we can go back to the quest list entry and off of our journal get the character reference, then get his current level. We get current level. And we will also drag in the assigned quest, get the info, break that. And now we'll check whether the current level is greater than the suggested level of our break s quest info. Add a select color node. So if that's the case, we will set that to green. But if not, we will have to check whether the current level equals the suggested level. Add another select color node. Plug that into the B of the first one. And so if that equals the suggested level, we'll set it to white. And if not, that means it's less than, we will set it to red. Then drag in the suggested level text, set color and opacity, then make, make slate color and connect our return value from our first select node to the specified color. Connect that, afterwards add a return node. Then we also need our update function for the rest. So you might be asking why we do two separate functions for that. But that update level color function we will also need to call when we level up and so we can just call that function and don't have to do all the rest in our update function just for performance reasons. It's better to separate them. So in update function we'll first get the quest name and set text and we will of course we need to get our assigned quest, get the info 
break that. You could plug in the name, but if we head over to the designer, you will see that we don't have infinite space for our quest text here. And I just experimented with some values and noticed that you can type in 26 characters before you will reach the end of our button here. So what we'll do is we will check whether the name has more than 26 characters and if so we will remove them and add three dots to indicate that the name would actually go on if you showed it completely. Alright, so to do that we'll get the name, convert that to a string, get the length of it, which is the amount of characters, check whether that's greater than 26, and add a select node. If it's false, just take the name and plug that into the in text. But if it's true, we will add a left shop and then you have to plug in the count, which is the amount of characters that should be removed at the end. To figure that out, we'll need to get the length and subtract 23. We are using 23 because then we can add our three dots and we'll have 26 characters in total then. Plug that in for the count and we will append three dots then convert that back to text and plug that in to our true. Afterwards get the region name, set text Here we can just expand our quest info, get the region, convert that to a string first, enum to string, and then plug that in for the text. Then we'll need to get a suggested level and set the text to the suggested level converted to a text, to text int it is. Plug that in, expand it and uncheck use grouping unless you want that to happen. After we set the suggested level text, we can update the level color and afterwards return. Then we can go to the event graph and call our update function on event construct. Compile and save. Alright, that's everything for the first part of our journal functionality. Hope to see you in the next one.